Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. It's been a while. So today, I wanted to go ahead and kind of refresh you guys with some more Path of Exile gameplay, especially since we have um, Exile Con coming so soon. So today, I wanted to go ahead and jump into something I haven't played in a little bit, and that's an RF Inquisitor. So I meant to make a video a few days ago, but the new graphical update kind of came in and really bricked my recording. So unfortunately, this character is a little bit staggered. So you can kind of see the progress already. Um, we have been playing for about three days. I think three days, maybe four days. 21 hours on the character. Honestly, has been really smooth. Inquisitor is a lot smoother than I remember. So I have really been enjoying the damage increase going from a Juggernaut to an Inquisitor. And today on the stream, we'll be getting our two Void Stones. Uh, we got a little bit unlucky since I did a very different Atlas strategy from what I normally would do. Um, so climbing the map tier has been a little bit difficult till we went into the two shaping nodes over here and here. Um, but yeah, today we'll be showing off, uh, you know, the void stone clears. So with that being said, I'm just going to jump into a quick map and show you guys the damage. Now this character is, remember, SSF very weak. We have very limited gear right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of show you like my, uh, you know, my weak ass scepter. I'm using a thrill steel. Uh, no annoying yet on amulet. I think the highlight of our character is honestly the shield. It's like plus one fire shield, but then gets physical mitigation via, you know, conversion to lightning, all res, minimum charges, avoid poison. Um, just two standard rings, nothing special there. Pretty nice body armor, to be honest. But, uh, you know, it's not a six link, right? Just good stats. The boots are all right. I need to take armor evasion off my filter. I'm using my jugs filter. The gloves are actually incredible. This is the one good thing. T3 dex, T3 life regen, chaos res, a little bit of armor, prefix open for life. So this is pretty awesome. And uh, just a belt. No jewels yet on the character, following a typical progression. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into this beach map. Now, a lot of people are going to ask the common question, you know, what is the difference between an RF Inquisitor versus an RF Juggernaut? One of the main things to understand is that Juggernaut is a lot more beginner friendly because it gets its core defensive layer, which is unbreakable. It gets that from the ascendancy. So what does that mean? It means as you play through the game and you ascend, your character will just grow so much stronger. Um, Inquisitor is similar because we unlock something called Pious Path, which gives us incredible amounts of sustain, which even allows us to sustain energy shield, but regen only takes you so far, it's only one defensive layer, right? So Inquisitor, in my opinion, for the newer players, you really want to go block-based. I know a lot of people like to just face tank. Uh, Inquisitor won't be face tanking red tier content unless you are block-based, so that's one of the big things we are looking to push for on this character. Going block base typically is going to require a Shaper Shield crafted with uh, percent life gain on block. So that's kind of the route that we're going to be uh, going on this character. Yo, come back, dude. Even for like a possessed T11, the damage is not bad on a four link, I have to say. One of the really cool things about Inquisitor is it gets it gets to make use of a node called Elemental Overload. Now, a lot of people who play Inquisitor RF say that Inquisitor doesn't have a very good fourth ascendancy. It's like very, or, you know, like when you ascend, it's very underwhelming and you're not wrong, but hear me out. Righteous Providence ends up giving you a shit ton of crit chance because you get 1% crit per point of strength or int, whichever is lower. Just because of our natural tree pathing, we're going to have a lot of strength and a lot of int. What this means is your fire trap is naturally going to have decent crit chance, which means you can take elemental overload because it has actual very good value, right? So that's one of the nice things about Inquisitor. The, the damage feels really consistent. Also, compared to a Juggernaut, you do get two extra multipliers. You have enemies on Kong ground take increased damage, and you have nearby enemies have kind of like this little circle underneath them. See that circle? That's making them take increased elemental damage, which is another multiplier. A lot of people, though, when they play Inquisitor, they're kind of like a little bit of a chicken and they sort of run away all the time, right? They're just constantly running. A lot of the times your con ground is not going to apply unless you are stopping to recreate it. This is another reason why I do recommend Juggernauts for uh, a lot of newer players. But I have to say Inquisitor has a very nice curve. 
it's very enjoyable to me. I, I do genuinely miss, you know, uh, playing Inquisitor. One of the things I think that put me off is since I mainly play SSF, one of the big pivots for Inquisitor is getting like an Aegis Aurora with Melding the Flesh. Melding, not so hard to get. Aegis, uh, that's another story. <laughs> so uh, that's the thing. Although this go around, I'm gonna try something a little different. We're gonna we're gonna aim to go Corrupted Soul. That's part of why I have Legion on my Atlas. Corrupted Soul will give me 15% of my maximum life, added as maximum ES, and half of the damage I take goes through my energy shield and hits my life pool, which is very good for a life gain on block setup. Because in a normal life gain on block setup, I would have to have all of my energy shield go away before I'm actually healing from the, the block damage, with the exception of chaos damage. Now, another thing is, in this patch specifically, the, the patch that we're playing, right, Inquisitor and more so hybrid builds actually got some love. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, Juggernaut did as well. One of the cool things about hybrid builds in this patch is the new masteries. So I'll go ahead and pop them up real fast. The uh, physical damage taken as chaos is immense for physical mitigation for builds like this. And even taking the physical damage, 10% um, of your armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits. Even that is very, very, very strong in a setup like this when you are converting physical damage. Not to mention we benefit off of these nodes, right, as a hybrid character. We don't have much energy shield right now, but that's primarily because my gear doesn't really have a lot of ES, right? One of the other really nice masteries is this one. Uh, sorry. This one here. 1% max LA res if your helmet, body armor, gloves, and boots all have armor. Now again, Juggernaut, we take the same thing. It's just something that really does help with the survivability of Inquisitor. Since uh, the damage was always pretty good, it was mainly the survivability that lacked. Okay, and then I think uh, we're pretty much done here. I can show you guys a quick really bad Legion clear if you'd like to see. Uh, part of the goal as well for Legion is we are trying to acquire a six-link incubator known as the Geomancer Incubator instead of doing something like farming chains that bind. Okay, that's pretty much done on that side. Now we just go look over here. Uh, nothing important here, and that's it. And we don't really care about anything else. So we've had two deaths on this character, one of them to uh, Cough Cough Legion. Uh, the other one, I don't actually remember what happened. I think we were running a super rippy map. Is that a soul eater? Oh boy, that is indeed a soul eater. Um, okay, no problem, he's gone. He gone. Nice. All right. Well, that's pretty much about it. Also, if you guys are wondering, I uh, took all of my previous SSF characters and I just migrated them into Trade League. Uh, the reasoning for that is it gives me a fresh stash again, so I can basically do a restart in SSF without having to buy, uh, you know, a private league. And then, of course, it also wipes your Atlas, so you get a clean slate, which is honestly phenomenal. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. If you guys want to see more rf inquisitor gameplay or you know check out exilcon when they actually uh start showing it feel free to head to my stream at twitch.tv slash pox but anyway that's pretty much about it so if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like share and subscribe other than that that's pretty much about it so i'll see you guys all tomorrow thanks everyone so much for watching